Okay, well, this week we're going to look at Arter and how to record things in MIDI. Some of it will be uh, things you've seen before uh, when we've looked at Arter before, but this is kind of a one pass all the way through. So stick with me. Uh, let's have some fun. <laughs> Okay, so let's get started with this. Uh, this is Arter. You should you should have seen this a few times by now before I do anything else. I want to come down here, edit my preferences. I want to go to control services, and I'm going to say I have a generic MIDI control service. Now, if I have a... Uh, when, when Arter comes, it knows uh, some additional facts about some keyboards, uh, what knobs are on your keyboard, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, like that. Uh, not too much on the notes. I mean, they're pretty constant, uh, keyboard to keyboard. But if I double-click this, I can tell it specifically what keyboard I'm using, and it's got the knob set up, uh, sliders, whatever, for the various keyboards. And I am using a... a uh, oxygen so i'll keep that there uh, if you don't you can uh, reset all and it'll it'll still work uh, i think there's some other uh, videos we've done that talk about how to uh, find out what knobs or what numbers etc in the oxygen keyboard you can go back and look at those but for right now this will do generic midi the oxygen keyboard and i want to add a mini track and i'm going to call it keyboard one so i'll add that and here's my MIDI track. Now what I always like to do is come up here and look at my jack connections before I do anything else because some of this can be, uh, if not intimidating, it can be a little confusing. So make sure you have just what you want. Here in, in my jack setup, here's my oxygen keyboard and it's going to my systems MIDI through. And over here in MIDI, I can look and see that my system, I have MIDI capture one going into Arter, and it's going into Keyboard 1, which is this one you'll notice we just made. Now, watch this, and... Uh, oh, yeah, I recorded my desktop. Uh, now, watch when I come up here to the Keyboard 1, and notice that it also says MIDI Capture 1 here when I look at its connections. If I come back to my Arter connections and were to come here and say unhook, notice that it unhooked it in here and put Capture 4 on and connect that, and it hooks it back up or disconnect, put back on Capture 1, connect those up. It's got Capture 1. MIDI and, I mean, Arter and Jack are pretty tightly linked, so uh, it doesn't matter much whether you make the connections in uh, the Jack connections or here within Arter. Uh, they're going to they're gonna work either way. So, let's, that being said, let's go, let's go play something. Uh, we'll turn on the... And you didn't hear anything. So, which is kind of part of my secret plan here, but we'll get to that in a second. Let me open this up. Let's take a peek at the piano roll. Notice this is the part of the key, the whole keyboard that's being represented. And I can come up a little bit and bring my notes in. I can go view, zoom to region. Oops. Highlight the region first. Zoom to region, and there's my notes. And okay, uh, I want to show you this. See how this is kind of this little square is kind of highlighted there. If I pull that, that actually opens how much of the keyboard I can see. Uh, and here, here's the notes I made. You'll notice there wasn't any sound, so uh, there wasn't any sound because MIDI by itself. Uh, will only send send note signals, which which these are. I need to have it hooked to something that says make a sound when you get a MIDI note. So we'll come up here to plugins, which we've looked at before in previous videos, and I'll pick Calf Monosynth. Uh, 
which we've also looked at in pretty good detail. And now let's go try to play that. Uh, rewind. Pretty weird. Okay, so let's uh, let's come down and try that again. Arm this track. Arm recording. Okay, now let's play that back, turn off recording, rewind. Okay, notice I have my previous recording and my new recording laid over the top. That's part of Ardor's non-destructive recording. So let me just take this region pull it and pull it way over here out of the way and I'll come in here and I'll say no kill that region now let's pull this back all the way back now let's try it rewind Okay, so there, there's that. Now, one of the things that's kind of cool about this is uh, I can come up here and bring up the plug-in and choose maybe a different preset. Let's, I don't know what fat cats are, but we'll, we'll take a listen. Uh, okay, well, fat cats isn't that impressive. Let's... Uh, Come back here, rewind. Oh, I don't hear a damn thing. And one more time, let's, didn't we play with Octaworm, okay. Okay, anyway, the point is that you can come in here and you can uh, change the synth. These are all just notes and the piano roll, they're going to stay there. You can change what the, uh, change out which synth is playing, you can change out the, the parameters of the synth or and uh, get any sound you like now I do want to show you one kind of interesting thing I stumbled across here when pencil mode will let us edit this MIDI piano roll and let's open that up a bit uh, kind of shrink that down so I can see better and slide down here a little more and come down here and put in another note Okay, and I'll put in a G. Now let's come back and play it. Okay, did you hear that? And and the reason is, and this is kind of kind of interesting. Uh, remember, calf is a monosynth, and so it will only play one note at a time. So while I have three notes in here, uh, the system's trying to choose between one and the other. If you want to play uh, more than one note at a time, you'd have to pick for your plug-in a, a polysynth, something that, that is uh, capable of playing more than one note at a time. So this might be an interesting effect. It might be a pain in the butt, but... Uh, that's what's going to happen if you try to play multiple notes with a, with a monosynth, uh, play multiple notes at the same time. 
So that's it for this week. I just kind of want to show you that we're gonna we're gonna do some other things later, but this is this is kind of key to it. So how to record in MIDI? Uh, just to run back over it real quick. Uh, edit preferences. Pick your uh, control service. Make sure your connections are good in Jack. That you've got the keyboard going to MIDI and MIDI going to your input. Uh, you can do multiple. I can turn this off and bring up another, uh, make another MIDI track, call it Keyboard 2, and uh, hook it to another synth, um, and play a different part. I can do all those things. You can have, you know, art in order. I have no idea how many, maybe as many as your system has memory to handle, but you can uh, stack these up just like you would audio tracks or anything else. So that's it for this week. Uh, have a blast. Okay, I'm back just for a minute. I forgot to tell you something. Uh, we we want to export this as MIDI. Uh, we're going to need that for next week. So what I want to do is come down here, select that region, and right-click. Well, I don't see it there. Let's come up here to Regions. And there it is, Export. And it'll come up and ask me where I want to export it so I can name it whatever I want. It will export it as a MIDI file. And we're out of here. So that's it. I'll see you next week and we'll do something with the Itsy Bitsy Spider. Okay, well that's it for this week. Uh, save that MIDI file. We're going to need it next week. Uh, otherwise, here's uh, the versions I'm using if your stuff does not quite like mine. And check out the websites. Uh, lots of help there. Uh, Ardor in particular, uh, make sure you're looking at Ardor 3 and not Ardor 2. You can get screwed up if you're looking at an old version. And otherwise, I'll, I'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>